Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Ace Attorney Justice for All. I'm host Kayla Hewitari, and today we are going to continue with the first day of trial. Let's get to it. <clears throat> March 22nd, 2.14pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Dude, I can't believe that... Adrian, no way! Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews! She is your manager, it would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your Hakama. Hmm, because she was the one who came to wake me up. <clears throat> then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered John Corita. But why? I thought she was buds with John. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see it by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze. Okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix? You think her motive is related to Celeste Impact's missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact for her strengths and will to live. <clears throat> but then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself? It sounds like she left a suicide note, and she, the person thought to have hidden it is Jean Court, uh, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corita, all to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible, but one thing bothers me. Hmm, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' codependency was regards to Miss Impax. It was Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. March 22nd, 2.25 p.m. District Court, defend, uh, courtroom number three. We will reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please bring out your witness. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Jean Corda's room. occupation. I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt on guard. I see, now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. What is it? <clears throat> I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing. I would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Uh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relationship to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corrida. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Jean. But this was a private matter between Jean and myself. Hmm, so it was a... 
fry and bait matter, or was it bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. But I, I didn't kill him. No one has accused you of that. I've got a feeling someone will soon. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well then, witness. Please testify to the court. About what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. When I found the body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Jean's room, and there was his dead body. I, I was in shock. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes, sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of the crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She is one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pace. Disrupt her pace? She's the type of woman that is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking. So you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over, understand? Start pressing. And what was Mr. Ongard doing at this time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm. Mr. Ongard did say he was taking a nap. Then I guess you could say it could not have been taken out of his room, was... Excuse me? It? What are you? Right, I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with a subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. Ongard's knife from his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object. Right, did you skip basic grammar? The witness may continue. English lessons from Edgeworth. <laughs> and why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Sean was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim. Sorry, but I don't have any such intentions in mind at the time. I can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got to his room? <clears throat> you were in shock? What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corita. 
Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm, I see. This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yes, Lamo was the knife lodged in his chest. And the guitar case was like this too. Yes, it was open and empty, of course. And then, what did you do next, witness? Juice. Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table. So I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on the wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I, I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down without th drinking it. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body at John Corrida, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank. I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that, it, as you said, you made a mistake. The scene of the crime. At the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm. Actually, so would I. I. I'm sorry. It's just, it's kind of embarrassing. When I, when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. The flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? This mess of glass shards. It was originally on top of the dresser. But when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I felt that since the crime scene was already in disarray, that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. I was the one who knocked the flower vase over where it fell onto the guitar case. What kind of flower vase was it? It was a glass vase and it was fairly big and heavy. I thought I would try to take Jean's pulse, so I set the glass I was holding down on the dresser. And that's when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. That's odd. I thought she was always in total control of herself. That's what she would like people to think. Always be mindful of the gap between the perception and reality. It doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. I warned you earlier that she would not crack so easily. 
The only way to make her is to keep on the offense of not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some very strong decisive evidence. I have to find something. I just have to. For Maya's sake. case. There we go. Whoops. <clears throat> you testified that you knocked the flower vase over, is this correct? Y yes And are you sure it fell under the guitar case? I is there some problem with what I said? <clears throat> it's not some problem, it's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. <clears throat> However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, you testify that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. But that's very true. Furthermore, there is one other strange thing about this guitar case. W what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo, shall we? The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with and what is wrong with that? <clears throat> if the guitar case were open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Ah What is your point, right? That the case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over? Is that all? No, think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. Ugh. Yes, that's right. She did implicitly say that she didn't touch the guitar case. But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is... A dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing to the case at all. <clears throat> that may very well be. However, an empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case. Hmm. It seems that there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Yes. Make a testify. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm going this far either. Alright, I'll follow along for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> the guitar case. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? <clears throat> the case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Hmm, it looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. Um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination now. Hmm. Using any way to change the subject. A convenient escape for a weak man. said guitar case. I don't see her prints on it. Objection. There is no way you were the one who opened that guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Andrews. 
because the only fingerprints on the guitar case are those of the victim. Ah? Uh? What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony. So of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing <clears throat> a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves. The scene of the crime. That's strange. You wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? And why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Why, of course I do. Does your wine glass with your fingerprints on it ring any bells? I have your proof right here, this wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Uh, even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? <clears throat> that you put your gloves just back, back on just to open the guitar case? Like you <clears throat> hit the nail on the head this time. What do you mean? I believe that the guitar case plays a very important role here. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, but the guitar! The bright red guitar was at the studio. Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. When was... It, what was in the case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean... it was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not right either. Hmm. I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves despite the fact that... on the case. Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into the mis his misguided. No, Your Honor. Please, recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. Which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten us all as to why the guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Uh. Can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well, yeah, of course I can. I'm Phoenix Wright. Let's suppose for a second. <clears throat> but the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing? Y you don't mean to suggest that a bright... What? Uh. So, you ex intend to push your theory that the case was not empty. Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside the case at the time of the murder? How about a suicide note, anybody? Wait, that's the wrong one. And why would something like that be inside a guitar case, let alone this one? Why, Mr. Wright, why? Well, I just thought it might have been possible. I have a suggestion. Why don't you put that in the void where your brain is supposed to be? 
Yes, and never bring it out again. It wasn't the suicide note? Can't I foolishly, foolishly, fool just get some love? Do you still think you can prove your theory? Can you prove that the guitar case was not empty at the time of the murder? I wouldn't say it's something I didn't intend to prove. Now let's see what was inside the case at oh, the murder. It wasn't a suicide note? Huh. This one was her suicide note. Hmm. Well, it is to do with Lotus photograph. This is this is a photograph. Yes, but what is important is what is in the picture, Your Honor. <clears throat> in this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I am proposing is <clears throat> Inside the guitar case was the nickel samurai. The hero's very own costume. What? Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Wright, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? I refuse to accept your fury. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? <clears throat> you... You mean... the photo. Order, order! It looks like we're... wanted into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume? W wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendant's be in the victim's room? Inside the guitar case, of all places. Hmm, true. That is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was the Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? It was a spare costume. Mr. Ongar did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I am saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had planned to bring this spare to the ceremony. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Corrida, was the jamming ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai's spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? Ah, so that's what he intended. Well, what are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Uh, uh no, I just... <clears throat> Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer. <clears throat> and then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Alright, this is what I think. 
The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was... Hold the press conference. What is this? On the night of the murder after the stage show. <clears throat> the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, and the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at the conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up right. But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ongar himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can mean only one thing. The conference was set up. By none other than the victim, Mr. Jean Corrida himself. The, the victim? Yes. The spare local samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corrida was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference? But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet, however. What I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at the conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Jean Corrida, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Mad on Guard. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession, that's public disclosure. <laughs> Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set by John. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him, that was also me. You? Sean had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looks like somehow Jean had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's action career had it been revealed. What? And do you know what the secret of Mr. Ongard's is, Miss Andrews? That's something only Jean knew. I, I don't know what it is. Ah, uh, I see. I... I've probably been... coming off quite suspicious to everyone. But that's to be expected. I've been living to protect Matt, after all. P protect Mr. On Guard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. Protecting Matt. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Jean no matter what. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing <clears throat> at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. Hmm. This does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If there are no objections, I feel that I can pass a verdict based on this testimony. Now then, Mr. Wright, if you please. 
Looks like somehow everything is flying in the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. Start with pressing. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Uh, if you want to prove that someone did something, you need free things. Free things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things true, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school, at least not from what I remember. May I continue now? What did you do, Phoenix? Sleep through law school? So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Jean chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that one he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes. Because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. On guard himself didn't know anything about a press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? But anyway, the important thing here is that the information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree, Miss Andrews. Please correct your testimony, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Has Mr. Ungard done something to her to betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Corita with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. On Guard, yet you still helped out? Objection. The person on trial right now is Mr. On Guard, right? What the witness was thinking helping the victim with his plan is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the def defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? But, but didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. Ongard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Mr. Ongard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him for the show, he honestly was napping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm, I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews said. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, however. The judge is going straight at me. Uh, uh, he's glaring at you, smart guy. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and the murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matt's Akama. Isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh, looks like you were out fox again, Mr. Wright. Uh, anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. It's an icy stare, yes. 
Andrews, for Mr. Ray's sake, please add the information to your testimony. The button was torn off of John during his fight with Max. And how did you know that? When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly, or so I heard. Hmm, I've heard that before too. Why does Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that, just because I'm prepared and you are not. Uh, I'm gonna put ahead there this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be in here, but where and what? What you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed things about Mr. On Guard at any time. Why then? Would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason why Mr. Corrida planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. On Guard as much damage as she possibly could. The witness bears ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright Wax Philosophical Power Hour. And please stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss An As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me it sounded a little wishy washy. Wishy-washy. Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now. But you'll need strong and decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. Uh, I'm going to pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. Okay, I finally found what I was looking for. Autopsy. Strangled with a scarf. He stabbed after. That's a name. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Is it strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim was already had already died. And, and what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly, which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Uh, that's right, Miss Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. <clears throat> this button was consciously pulled off with the victim's already dead body. Order, order! What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you the simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know the button was not torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. <coughs> that would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? You're right. Does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with his button? What could it have been? To pin the crime on on guard. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. 
There is no way anyone would put a bloody button on their own pants. That's right, Mr. Ongard was set up. By the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who is the world of the real killer, then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard, is... Oh, sorry, Adrian. You kind of got to... For you under the bus. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you. You are my Mr. Corey's killer. Wh what? Order, order, order! Mr. Wright. This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. Uh, 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 preposterous. You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Or do you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stop the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It would use to throw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner was him and knew which knife to take was you. <laughs> then, what, what about the button that was found in Matsukama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body, or the killer. However, if Mr. Ongard was the real killer, there is no way he would put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Uh, 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 um, then, the only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ongard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap. Which is you, yet again, Miss Andrews. I... I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. The costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is Miss Adrian Andrews. No, no, I, I... But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at this time. But that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Uh, and to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews. You're also kind of short in stature, are you not? B -b please stop! Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, uh, I've got her this time. 
Miss Andrews? I... I... I refuse to testify. What was that? There's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something. If it can incriminate me. Well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ongard's room. Adrian Andrews. Y yes Think hard about what I said. The purple we discussed, understood? Uh, all right. That's it. That's when Francesca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify as things look bad. She did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done. <laughs> What's wrong, Bright? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence. What a... Oh, humorous, Mr. Edward. I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. W what? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corrida. Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corrida? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There is nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taking that defiant attitude again. M Mia, what should we do? Somehow we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do. And that is to declare a recess. R recess No! I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow? We don't have a tomorrow to deal with. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial... Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... that's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please. Please let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict, then my, uh... It's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... Objection! It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination, however. If the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of... And she has no right to withhold testimony. Y yes, that is very true, but... 
Actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Y yes and... I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds the body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read out of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. Phew. When I found the body. That glass of juice? I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it <clears throat> in that messy state. And John, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking at in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Hmm, so you poured that glass of juice for the victim? Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? No, no, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. But, there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, why did you pour- who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there is a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, Wright, be quiet and listen. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ugh. So, it was a mess. Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Corrida? I understand your frustrations at not being able to prove your fury, however. Before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Urgh. And then, what did you see next witness? Slumped over? Yes. He was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me, or did that right there sound a little odd? Then what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix. And then felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see, so you didn't think he was dead at all? You thought he fainted. I thought he was asleep at first. But then the room was in such a messy state. I thought maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when you went to pour the glass of juice. Yes, 
he always had a hard time waking up. So, Sean always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, what happened next? And how did you come to realize that he was, in fact, dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to take his pulse. I, I was shocked and staggered backwards. And knocked the fire vase over. So that's what happened? Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides. And Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance yet to kill the prosecution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? Well, I'm going to use this statement, but first to save. I'm seeing photo, where are you? There you are. No, that wasn't it. Huh. I thought that would be it. Alrighty, now what to do? Hmm. Do, 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 do. had the wrong statement. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Eh? What is the meaning of this? <clears throat> Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There is a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corrigan's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would be... Would have immediately thought that they had found a dead man. Uh, um, that's... Well, you see... I thought a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted. And then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Y your point is... Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Uh, oh! And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. No! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt on guard, is not guilty after all. But... That's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I tell you, it wasn't me. It was Matt. I swear it. He's the one who killed John. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. But that's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? Uh, I, I, I refuse to testify. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Monongard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is, is it over? Have we, have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. Now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. Now then, I would like to... hand down my verdict from Mr. Matt on guard. Objection. 
Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. Absolute real truth? What are you talking about? Witness, don't you understand yet? Uh-huh. I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head. But as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matt Ungard will go free, and in his place, you will become the guilty party. Th that's... That's a lie. I, I don't believe you. What? I... I was told if I spoke... If I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lived by gripping tightly onto the words of another. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. But then right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word no matter what happens. If you do, my own card will be acquitted. <clears throat> Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now, and is clinging on to them. Th then, what should we do? This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is, is get her not guilty. That is my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Jean. Help, please, someone help me. Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? Well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what the witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be. Except the woman crying over there, right? Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Um, quest not guilty verdict or first Andrews to testify? Well, I'm gonna do a save. There's a part where there's an alternate ending if you get it wrong. Can't remember where it is though. We will carry on and force Andrews to testify. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But... <clears throat> I can't bear myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. M Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure, Mr. On Guard would get an acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want the trial to end? But be quiet. How, how dare you? You, you're trying to trick me. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. I, you're wrong. Such a shame. I'd hope things wouldn't come to this, however. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify. It falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S stop! But Mr. Edgeworth! 
This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop. Please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Uh, uh, that's, that's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her codependency na nature. Having, having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you, it, if people find out... If people find out, I... I If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Hedgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your breathing lips, no matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk, but please help me. N nothing matters anymore. My crime. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room, and then I stabbed John's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why, that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. So stab the body with the knife? But why would you do that? <clears throat> Isn't it obvious to pin the blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man. What? What do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt. That scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time. So Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Jean Corrida, in the chest with the knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. W what? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Alright, let's start pressing. But you could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is a part of the Jammin' Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Jean, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Jean and silence him for good. 
That's when I thought I should forge some evidence and put pin this crime on that. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. And that was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner and his fingerprints all over it. But what if I use that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. <clears throat> Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then when I stabbed John's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you fought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. Ongard's Hakama. Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes she, it was Lana. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready pacing back and forth. That's my old bag for you. I'd already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go <clears throat> out looking like myself and get caught again. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Jean's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes. Jean wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. What is this secret? That I don't know. Anyway, I felt that... Anyway, I felt that if I were to leave Jean's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So after that, you went back to Mr. Ongard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Akama, yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word! What does this all mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal. Here's my own card. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down and for a talk. Francesca, huh? <clears throat> she said that I should under no circumstances confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I, I had no choice but to believe in her words. This witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. W wait, Your Honor. The defense has... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews of anything. 
Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination as this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That's all. Court is adjourned for today. What? Did I get it wrong? Today's, today's trial, it's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time, you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered John's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card was has any relevance to John's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why... Hold it! Witness! That card! Give it to me at once! Hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This... I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. I... I don't... didn't mean to. But what is this all about? I've never seen such an emotional Edgeworth in my entire life. That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? To be continued. Alright. Well, that's the end of this part of the uh, trial. My name Kaylee Watari. Please like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. And next time we'll continue with um, the... Rest of the trial, I guess. We'll look at you next time.